Hi, I'm Candice Bax Friesen, and welcome to our podcast, Investor Smarts, Money and the Entrepreneurial Spirit. So we host a whole pile of different entrepreneurs in their journeys on this podcast. And today I'm really excited to have Keith Smith with us from Straight Up Living. So welcome, Keith. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And where are you from? I am from uh, in the United States, uh, Frankfort, Kentucky. Nice. And how's the weather over there right now? It's great right now. Uh, we're in the middle of springtime, so everything's blooming out and beautiful. Uh, today, the weather is going to be in the mid-70s, so as of right now, it's perfect. Nice. That's awesome. Spring is so great because everything just gets blooming again, and it feels like everything comes alive, and I love spring. Yeah. yeah. I think these days, it feels a lot like hope. With yeah, everything exactly. that's going on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So tell us a little bit about your journey to where you have come now. And, uh, you know, I mentioned you're from Straight Up Living, but what does that mean and what's your business all about? Okay. Well, Straight Up Living is something that I began uh, over 10 years ago, close to 11 years ago now. Originally, it was just going to be a blog. And that's what I did. And in fact, that's really, uh, I'm a writer. So that's really, how I got started uh, with officially putting my writing out into the world. And my topics were almost always along the lines of self-development and just really embracing life and not just sitting on the sidelines and wishing your life away. So my tagline used to be straight up living life is now don't wait. So that philosophy is something that has carried me through for the past decade. And it's really the core philosophy upon which I still operate today. That blog led to um, uh, me getting into uh, creating my own books. Uh, my first book was an automotive related book because my background is 100% uh, blue collar. I was a automotive technician slash AKA mechanic uh, for like 16 years and another four years involved in management and sales and everything like that in the world of automotive. So I wrote, uh, they always say, write what you know. So that was my first book because I didn't have to really do any research. I just could all basically took me only two months to write that book because I already knew all the information in my head. My second book was born out of my blog. So uh, it's not uncommon for people to blog for a number of years and go back through and call out their best uh, material and create a book out of it. Right. So that's really how I kind of got into writing and it kind of um, snowballed from there in a good way as I began to get more confidence in myself and grow as a writer and um, I should preface all this by saying originally I wanted to write, but had told myself that I could not do so. Uh, the same reasons that everyone convinced themselves that they can't do something. I had a whole list of excuses as to why I could not do it. And we can get into that if you want, but basically we all know all that stuff is lies that you tell yourself because you don't have confidence or uh, self-esteem or something like that. Yeah. So anyway, I got involved into, um, my journey took me into writing. I started getting involved in uh, ghost writing with a uh, book company for a while. I did, it, did that for like five years, which really helped me to gain a lot of writing experience and a huge range of topics. Everything from people's personal life stories, like a memoir, to um, business books, self-development, uh, you name it. So I was ghostwriting those books. Uh, help, helping to ghost write those books, I should say. Mm -hmm. And that led me later on into developing my own content writing business where I began to do content writing for other people. Entrepreneurs, for example, would hire me to write content for their blogs. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really born out of the philosophy that, you know, we all have strengths and think that we're really good at and not all of us do writing. Uh, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it all. You can't do it all. So right. people, hire that kind of stuff out and that's kind of where I come in and so ghost, write God. So ghostwriting is something that maybe people don't really know what that is, but basically you write an article and you pretend that you're me and yeah. so it looks like I wrote this article, but you really wrote it for me. And Exa I think that one of the mind blocks for a lot of people is, well, how would you know my industry as well as I know it? So in writing books for other people, you know, you're suddenly writing, you, you have an automotive background and you're suddenly writing a book 
for a doctor. Mm -hmm. you want to explain a little bit what that was like? Because I'm sure it was very overwhelming or intimidating. Oh, yeah. To write about something that you don't know. But I think for people to wrap their head around the fact that you could have other people like yourself do these tasks, empty like me, that's that's overwhelming to have to sit down and write all these articles amongst everything else that sure. I'm busy with. So do you want to touch on that a bit more? Yeah. Uh, from my standpoint, it, it can be overwhelming, it, it, at least at first, because I didn't um, hadn't developed the research skills. It really all comes down to research and studying your client. Mm -hmm. um, when I wrote books or uh, was involved with writing ghostwriting books for other people, and sometimes they were doctors writing on health topics and deep things I knew very little about. But two things helped me get through that. One, my own research. You have to be willing to put in the time and the work to learn mm -hmm. who you're writing for. So you can, for two reasons. One, so you can understand the content. And for two, so you can write from their perspective and their voice and not your own. And that's a big one to overcome. At first, I was writing everything in my voice and I was changing too much. Uh, the second thing is, uh, it almost always involves the participation of the client in some way. They will provide you with some content and ideas, uh, oftentimes in written form. Um, sometimes they actually have attempted to write the book themselves or they just spill out a bunch of content. And then you take that information and it helps you shape it into a book. So it's very useful uh, both for them because they're participating 100%. The expertise is still theirs. You're just taking their expertise and putting it into words for them. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. And I, I personally didn't really know anything about this until I started looking into writing a book and I'm uh -huh. still in the process of writing. But yeah. what really helped me a lot was that, you know, they would ask, the person would ask me a question and we'd get that ball rolling, right? Mm -hmm. So to say, okay, we're going to write a chapter about um, leadership or something. Then I just, my mind goes blank because I don't, I don't even know where I'd want to start with that. But, but <laughs> yeah. when somebody can ask you questions and, and get your, get your thoughts coming out, like that's a skill in and of itself. And so I think that's just something really important that people need to know that it's much easier than we think it would be if you've never been oh, through oh, it. Oh, absolutely. And people who uh, don't write or may not even have an interest in writing, because not everyone even wants to do it. And that's perfectly fine. I don't want to be a doctor, but I, I respect the profession. I'm glad they exist, but I don't have any interest in doing it myself. So it's okay if you don't know much about it. But like you said, it's not as challenging as you may think if you have someone to kind of help guide you through it and basically interview you, ask you the right questions. And because you're already, it, it's your expertise, you're passionate mm -hmm. about it. As soon as someone starts asking you questions, that information will start for rolling out. Before you know it, you've got a lot of content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. So when we think about like PR, when I think of PR 20 or 30 years ago, you know, I think of people who would be on, um, you know, you'd have to try and be on a show, a talk show mm -hmm. on TV, yeah. or you'd be spending thousands of dollars to have advertising go out on TV because that was the big one, right? We'd all sit in front yeah. of the TV and that was, or read the newspaper and the paper was thick, you know, now it's very thin. There's not as much going out, but um, can you comment, I guess, a little bit, I know you said that you also do articles for people and mm -hmm. stuff like that. How can people really use your services to grow their business as an entrepreneur? Okay. Well, the great thing, the times in which we live now, and while it can be intimidating because there's so much technology and so many different avenues that you can avail yourself of to get your message out, but you don't have to master it all at once. For example, social media, there's multiple social media channels from Facebook to Instagram to LinkedIn, you name it. Bottom line is, is try to find out where your core audience is putting their attention. If you're really dealing with a lot of business type stuff, obviously you want to be on LinkedIn. If you're looking more towards life coaching type things, you may want to be on Instagram and Facebook um, and so on. The good thing about this era in which we live is the gatekeepers are no longer really a factor. Right. You don't have to go through, like you know, if you want to do your own PR, you don't have to go out and hire. Uh, you still can, and sometimes mm -hmm. it can be advantageous. But you know, a lot of yeah. times when you're just starting out, you can't afford to hire people to be your press agent for you. 
and to get you gigs and so forth, you can do it yourself. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. Uh, and the most important thing is consistency, but you can do it yourself. And we talk about creating content, uh, whether it's a book or articles. The good thing about when you, once you have created content, whether it's a book or several articles, you can then, then use that content in a variety of ways. The work's mm -hmm. already been done, but you can use it over and over again. It's like what we call an evergreen product. It doesn't go bad. It doesn't go away. The information right. is always going to be relevant. So you can take pieces of it and do your own PR and teaser information out on social media to try to attract people to your, whatever your core offering is, whether it's your mm -hmm. book or your services, wherever the case may be. But the gatekeepers don't exist. Like I say, you can uh, take PR into your own hands and talk directly to your audience rather than through a second or a third party. Mm -hmm. So uh, people really get to know you more. People expect to get to know you now um, as opposed to getting to know you from afar, which is what television co commercials feel like or newspaper articles used to feel like. Yeah. Um, now they're like, they're listening to you. Yeah. Directly. And, yeah. And I think, you know, more and more we're hearing that video is important and people get very yes. intimidated by video. It's like podcasts. Sometimes yeah. it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's easier to write and, and not have your face there. Right. Uh, sure. Out there. I can, yeah. But yet, video being so important, you still have to start with the content. And so, Absolutely. in some ways, the video portion of it can almost be easier if you get the content done first. It is easier. And I've done this. Uh, I first started doing some Facebook Lives several years ago um, because I just had all this passion and motivation inside. And I would just hit the live button and just go. And, and there's some, there's a certain cool factor about that, you know, be, be bold and just go for it. But I also would go back and watch my own lives and realize I was all over the map. Uh, and while I knew what I was talking about, I suspect I probably lost a lot of people along the way. So like you say, it's good if you can create the content ahead of time. And you don't have to necessarily script it verbatim and be a robot reading, you know, reading the script or whatever. But if you create the content ahead of time, you become familiar with it. And you can kind of stay on track and even have notes. Like I have a notepad beside me right now as I'm talking to you to help me make sure I stay on track and cover certain points. Yeah. And you're right. Video is becoming increasingly important. In fact, it's, it's, uh, I forget the stat now, but it's like 85, 90% of all internet traffic is video based. Yeah. So if you're not into video, you're going to have to get into video, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean like you said, the writing doesn't go away. It makes the writing that much more important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes too, you're going to find different opportunities like a podcast again, is more of a video opportunity to reach other people's audiences and to promote uh -huh. yourself. But there's also so many blog opportunities and there's still online magazines and the sky's the limit, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it literally almost is endless the ways in which you can, you can express yourself message to your audience today. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that a book still has so much power, right? So we, we can look at the PR of promoting your company and, and those sorts of things online. Uh -huh. But, you know, when you end up at somebody's event or you end up at a meeting, whenever we're allowed to go back to in-person meetings, right? and if I pull out my book and I'm like, hey, guys, I wrote this book, there's something about giving somebody a book. Anytime somebody's given me a book that they've written, it just feels like, it's so special because this is like something that they've yeah. wrapped, right? Like it's like such a powerful gift. And so it is. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about that maybe? It does. I mean, you, everything you said is 100, 100% spot on. And, and no matter the reason why you wrote the book, but especially if you have written a book because you're in some way involved in business, whether it be your own business, working for someone else's business, whatever the case may be, whatever your expertise is, when you write a book on it, people still view that it's still even in, in this digital age because books don't have to be paper nowadays. As we know, they can be digital as well. Yeah. However you like to consume it, it doesn't matter. Once you have written a book, it gives you, uh, it very much gives you a sense of uh, not you so much as the people who receive the book or not find out about the book. 
a sense of that, hey, this person's legit. I mean, they have, they must be an, it, it just gives you that platform of, um, like I said, you're legitimate, you're an expert in your field, and it just gets people's attention. I remember where, especially with my background, having been, uh, yeah, you know, I, I didn't take journalism, I didn't take creative writing courses, anything like that, 100% self taught. Mm -hmm. When people first started finding out, and it didn't matter what interest industry I was working in, when people would find out that I had written a book, their whole attitude about me changed. Mm -hmm. And and I wasn't doing it for that reason, but they suddenly looked at they look at you differently, like, oh wow, you wrote a book? Then they then they get interested. And then if you get them with that book, well then now they're paying attention. Mm -hmm. So um there's like you said, it's just a lot of power. It's a platform uh for which you can build your entire business on. Uh I sometimes have heard books nowadays called it's, it's like a business card on steroids. Yeah. Uh, a business card by itself isn't all that impressive, but you hand someone a book. Well, then now they're looking at you differently. They're viewing you differently. Mm -hmm. And the chances of them hiring you for whatever it is you're offering uh, absolutely increases. Yeah. And I just, you know, I, I'm sort of the same way. Like my reason for writing a book, yes, it's to reach more people and to, but mainly it's to create more impact, right? And I've always said, yeah. if I can get an email from somebody that they've indirectly received my book, and I don't even know this person. Yes. You know, to get an email from somebody in Florida or somewhere far away um, to say, you know what, your book impacted me. Like, what a gift. Yes. Me. I'm glad you brought that up because a book is a great way to basically clone yourself, right? Um, I still love one-on-one, face-to-face, -on -face, uh, discussions with people, whether it's digital like we're doing right now, or uh, li literally in person, still my favorite way to, to communicate with people. But you're always limited to how many people you can do that with, right? Mm -hmm. well, as soon as you have written that book, and that book goes out there, it's like throwing the rock in the pond. The book is the rock, and those ripples just keep going and keep going. And and you, I mean, to this day, I'll I'll get uh, an email or a direct message, oftentimes, usually on uh, one of the social media platforms. People say, oh my God, I just read something you wrote, whether it be one of my little posts I've put on there, uh, some of my notes to self material, which is something we can talk about later. It's going to be a book at some point or one of my books. And, and oftentimes I don't even know the person. I didn't know they had even bought the book. Uh, or sometimes it's a book that I had given away, but I had just forgot that I had given it away yeah. and people have finally gotten around to reading it. And, and they send you messages like, you have no idea how much this meant to me and it really helped me in this time. I just can't put words on that. I mean, there's no amount of money or anything that can match the feeling you get when you know you've had that impact on people and books uh, do that for you. Yeah. So besides brand building, and that's obviously <laughs> our, our topic in, in this podcast is business and entrepreneurs and how uh -huh. a book can help them. We all know somebody who has this amazing story or you think of like your grandparents or different people and you're like, oh, I wish that they had written a book, right? But it's too yeah. late, mm -hmm. right? And I just feel so much that this quarantine and this COVID and social distancing, I'm always a couple person and that's probably why, but I yeah. see this <laughs> as such a gift that now we have time, right? There's there's so many times where it's like, okay, well, I could pay to write the book or, um, but I just don't have the time or, um, I'd like to start on writing a book, but I don't have the time or when I have time, right? That that's, we use that excuse so much in, in life. Yes. And I think for somebody who, if we know somebody who has this amazing story other than business writing and brand building, um, I think of some of the speakers at, at my women's event every month a few of them have written books and a few of them it's like, okay, seriously, get started on your book. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for people like that, where, what's a good place to start? So maybe people are intimidated by calling somebody like you because they're like, ah, I don't even know, ah. but they'd like to get started <clears> first. <throat> what would some tips be for people just to get that ball rolling? Yeah. Well, you're touching on something here uh, that we, obviously talk about uh, called legacy, right? You and I have just had these discussions before too. Yeah. And anyone can, can do this. It can be a CEO who came from nothing and built a company. Now his children will never know 
everything he did or she did to do that. Okay. But a book will give that gift to your family, to loved ones forever. Or it could just be a prominent member of your family, a matriarch or patriarch in your family mm -hmm. who had an incredible life experience. Maybe they lived through the Spanish flu, World War II, and they just beat the coronavirus. I just saw a story recently where a 104-year-old man did all that. Yeah, and what a legacy. I, first thing I thought of is like, that man should have a book because his family will keep that legacy alive forever. And there's so much they don't know. Yeah. And you're right, people, uh, some tips to get started. First of all, um, step one, I would say, is just to sit down with a blank piece of paper and ink pen and just think about what do I want those I care about, whether it be family members, loved ones, business audience, whatever your angle may be, Mm -hmm. What do I want them to know about me? What about my life do I want them to have learned from and to understood? And how, do I, how would I want that framed? And just start making some notes. And then step two, if you aren't comfortable with starting the writing process yourself, reach out to somebody. It doesn't necessarily have to be me, but if it is me, uh, and most people, writers are this way, I am this way, maybe not all, but you can always give it a shot. I have people who direct message me all the time with questions just like this. And most of the time they're intimidated at first because they know I'm out here writing, this is what I do, this is all what I do. Mm -hmm. And they know I make money from it. And maybe they can't even afford yet, or they're not to the point yet where they've decided they're ready to invest money right. in this because they don't know how much money it is, can I afford it, they have all these questions. So mm -hmm. they take no action at all. Go ahead and take the action. Worst case scenario, if someone doesn't respond to you. If it's me, I will eventually respond to you, but maybe they don't, but then you've lost nothing. But reach out and just throw the idea out there. Say, hey, Keith, Candace, whoever you may be reaching out to and say, I've really been thinking about writing a book. And now that we have all this time, like you say, this is really kind of a gift in some ways. Mm -hmm. All depends on how you frame it. And just ask, I would like to write a book. I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we can have a conversation. And if I don't have time in that exact moment, if I'm in, in the middle of a writing project, I will tell you, hey, I'll get back with you. Just let me finish this writing project. But have the guts to reach out. You have to take a step. Yeah. If you don't, it's never going to get done. So yeah. it's okay to reach out and don't be intimidated by it because, um, especially with someone like me, because I came from nothing too. If I can do it, I promise you, you can do it. I was going to say, everybody started in square one, right? Everyone's, yeah, everyone exactly. That was a exactly. beginner at one point. Exactly. And if they come across it in any other way, like they're somehow better than you, then you don't want to deal with work with them anyway. Yeah. So reach out and find some way. Most people are going to be humble about it and be very willing to help. Mm -hmm. um, so don't hesitate to reach out, take a few notes, figure out kind of what you want to do. Yeah. And if you don't even know what you want to do, still reach out and say, you know what? I want to write a book. But I don't know what I want to write a book about. Mm -hmm. Well, we can have a, we can have a talk and I promise you by the time we get done talking, you probably will have an idea about what you want to write about yeah and you also have a writing group right which i think is really important because anytime you're trying to achieve any goal if you have the accountability and the support of other like-minded people that's mm -hmm. huge like if i'm writing a book and i don't have anybody in my family who's writing a book they're not going to be encouraging me not that they're against it but they just don't have the same passion right and so absolutely like, like somebody who's um training for a marathon. Will you get other people who have done it or are currently doing it and you support each other? So 100%. Tell us a little bit about your group. I do. Yeah. We talked about, uh, I guess my primary moniker being straight up living. Well, underneath that is another effort, if you will, that I started called writers arise. And the whole purpose of writers arise, um, you know, there's a million and one writers groups, uh, out there on social media and the internet. There's dozens and dozens and for all various reasons. Some of them are very technical, teach you about things like grammar and all that sort of thing. Well, none of that is what Writer's Rise is. It really is just a safe place for anyone who is interested in writing, whether it be to have their book written by someone or if you wanna be the actual writer yourself, no matter your experience, it could be day one for you or you could be, you could have 10 books on the New York Times bestsellers list, you're welcome in the Writers Arise Facebook group because it is just a safe place of encouragement. We, this is uh, not a group where we uh, give you technical feedback and things like that on your writing. It's a place where you can share your stuff. And if you wanna go deeper, we can take it out of the group and talk about it. Mm -hmm. But it's a safe place for you to share your stuff. 
to uh, share your struggles, the things that you face. And um, uh, we've been doing a lot of that lately. There's some people who have even been sharing basically, uh, my daughter helps run it. One of my daughters helped run it. And she, for a while, has been putting writer's prompts in the group mm -hmm. just to get people to get their juices flowing, things like that, because some people enjoy that. Not everyone in the group participates, but a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. And things kind of calmed down and kind of went quiet, you know, when all this uh, COVID-19 stuff started happening. And so she shifted, like, to an ongoing writer's prompt. People can just share their experiences with how life is for them right now right. Uh, during the quarantine. The point is, uh, there are, there's very few rules. Uh, there's no fighting, debating, hate, and discrimination, all that normal stuff that uh, we will not tolerate. But otherwise, it's safe. You can come in, you can talk about your writing, you can talk about your fears, you can talk about your victories. Mm -hmm. And it's a place of encouragement and strength. And we were doing in-person meetings. I just had my first one prior to all this happening in February. And we'll get back into that. And I want to take this across the nation, by the way. Yeah. Once I get back out on the road. Um, cause I've been living on the road for almost a year now, uh, but currently I'm staying put, but that's the purpose of the writers rise group. Uh, if you're interested in writing, you don't know where to start or you, um, don't think you're good enough or whatever, come into the group and, uh, I promise you we'll convince you otherwise. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love that. And that's, again, sometimes what you need is just that safe place and then you started, yeah. you didn't realize you ever, you know, had it within you, right? But exactly, just that encouragement and yeah, mindset, I guess. So do you want to give us a couple of tips, sort of a little bit off topic or switching gears on just how you have been finding, you know, this whole self isolating and some tips that you uh, maybe for our audience that have gotten you through what is a very strange and difficult time for a lot of people? Yeah. The, the, I mean, the first thing that comes into my mind is, you know, so many people, and you and I kind of touched on this before we uh, started recording, so many people right now feel like life is on pause. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I get that, and parts of our lives are on pause, and I, and I totally get that. But life itself, does. there is no pause button. It never mm -hmm. stops until you stop breathing. So your life is still going on. So it's crucial and important to still embrace it. It's easy to say, you know, the only consistency in life is change because life always changes. It's the only constant. It's, it's yeah. one thing to say that. It's another thing to live it. Well, mm -hmm. right now we are all living it. So you don't just, you don't have to just sit on the couch and watch Netflix all day. That's wrong with that. Don't, don't send me or Candace hate mail. It's okay. You can binge watch all you want. That's totally cool. But, you don't have to just do that if you want to do more. Well, I've had to adjust myself. Um, like I said, I've been living the nomad life since June of last year. Um, I've been all, uh, not all over, but I've been over a huge portion of the United States. And the last thing I wanted to do was stop doing that. But I have stopped doing that lately for obvious reasons. And as a part of that, I was meeting people. I was writing stories about people and things like that, that I could only do while on the move. I can very easily take the tack now that all that is on hold now. So I'm just going to sit here until I can do that again. Right. But I've not done that. I've just, uh, and I hate to use the word pivot because it is being used so much right now. A business is pivoting, pivoting. But uh, for lack of a better word, I had to pivot in my thinking, okay, I can either stop writing uh, stories about other people mm -hmm. and I can just write my own books, which I am working on too. I've got so many projects right now. It's, it makes my head spin. But I had to change my thinking and just adapt to the situation. So I started looking for people's stories locally and started doing articles uh, for my local newspaper here. So uh, mm -hmm. I've never done journalist type writing before. So I went out and did some quick studying, found out kind of how they write. I kind of had a gist for it anyway and wrote a couple of articles. They loved it. Now they're putting them in the paper. Uh, so that does me good. And I'm not getting paid for that either, by the way. That was an effort that I did just to try to give back and use something that I have to help people mm -hmm. during this time. So the, the tip is just, you have to just morph in your thinking. Don't be so inflexible mm -hmm. that you just put everything on hold. You just shift your mindset and say, look, where can I help? And don't, if you start looking at like, Hey, where can I get something for me? Where can I get something for me? You could be so much more limited, but if you just take the mindset of how can I help? Who mm -hmm. can I help? and start being a help, the next thing you know, you have purpose, you have meaning again, 
Yeah. You're helping other people have purpose and meaning. And to me, that's the biggest tip I could give is just to look for how you can help, whatever your skill may be, and get involved in doing it, actually mm -hmm. doing it. Right. So you've touched a little bit on living a nomad life, moving around all the time. You don't have a set address right now. And that's totally doable with your type of job and career. Um, so if there's mm -hmm. other people who have always wanted to do that, and again, just not been brave enough, or they're getting to that point where now the kids are maybe starting to leave the house and they're thinking through yeah. that type of lifestyle because I think a lot of people have considered it. Um, and, you know, Canada's huge. America's huge. We can go for weeks and be seeing all kinds of our country, which is pretty amazing. So yes. is there anything that you have found, just because we're touching on that anyway, um, that was something that was just a huge advantage or just something that was eye opening from doing some like living that lifestyle or something that you didn't really think of that was super hard to adjust to. Um, because that's a huge life change for a lot of people again. It is. And it was a huge life change for, for me too. Um, certainly some advantages that made it possible for me was that all my children, I have three children, three daughters, but they're all grown. So mm -hmm. I don't have any, uh, I don't have that responsibility. They're all grown and self-sufficient. Uh, I'm also not currently in any kind of relationship. So it's just me alone. Mm -hmm. So that certainly makes it easier to make such a move. Now that said, it still was not an easy move. Um, I have never done that. I have fantasized about it. Like, uh, probably most people in Western society at some point of just leaving it all behind and hitting the road and going and living this, uh, wild and free life, but uh, that, only, that, only, that only gets you by for so far, right? I didn't want to just wander around. I wanted meaning and purpose, and certainly being a writer uh, helps me do that because I can work remotely. But the key is so many things nowadays can be done remotely. It doesn't have to be writing, um, but one of the first challenges to come over with is to create a steady enough income because you have walked away from the quote-unquote guarantee of a job and I say quote unquote because uh, even jobs are guaranteed as many people are finding out unfortunately my heart breaks for people right now during all this uh, global pandemic mm -hmm. um, that source of income can go away really quick so some of the things that, uh, try to keep myself on topic here I'm sorry uh, an advantage the advantage is obviously being alone having kids growing up made it easier for me to make the move, but I still had to, uh, I still had a car to pay for, which I have paid off now, but at the time I did not. But the key is, is to prep for it. I prepped for an entire year uh, of saving money, eating peanut butter and crackers for, for dinner every single night for a year. No exaggeration, every single night for a year. I ate other stuff during the day, so much because my health was important too, but I didn't go to movies, I didn't date, I didn't buy clothes, I didn't buy anything. I saved money to prepare myself for that move. So the key is preparation and, and you don't have to do the nomad thing either to live this life. Basically what we're talking about is living a minimalist type lifestyle, which will lessen the impact when the economy does go south, like it is right now, it will lessen the impact on you mm -hmm. significantly. And while it is impacting me, um, not as deeply or as horrifically as it is, as it is impacting some who have mortgages and car payments and things like that to consider. So yeah, if you're fantasizing about doing something like that, uh, you can do it. And if you have kids, probably not. That doesn't mean you can't make bold life changes nonetheless uh, and shift into something where you can't operate more remotely or mm -hmm. create your own side hustle. It doesn't have to take over your life and doesn't have to be your main source of income even, mm -hmm. but there's outlets and ways for you to do it. You just have to be willing to do what it takes to do it. There's always sacrifices and things to make, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that this whole pandemic is really helping people realize, like, what do I actually need? And it's just a exactly grounding for people. Like, I had one guy comment, um, yeah, I realized we actually probably don't need two cars. Yeah, mm. it gets little things, but yet it's huge. Yeah. Things, right? That we're spending money on yeah. things that we really don't have to spend money on. Yeah, and it's easy to, to fall into that. I mean, I've done it, so I never, uh, I don't try to preach the minimalist lifestyle to everyone and say, hey, you should be living like I'm living. 
but you're right. The less stuff that you can tie yourself to, because it, the more stuff you acquire, you eventually your whole reason for existing is to maintain that stuff and to keep that stuff or to keep paying for that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, it just weighs you down. There's nothing wrong with having a few things, uh, but you just don't need all the things. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you have a house full of stuff and you have multiple storage units full of stuff you know, that you haven't seen for the last six months, you know, it, it could be time to start rethinking how you're living life. Uh, and you're not wrong. You're not broken. It's just a habit you fell into and you yeah. can develop a new habit, replace it with a, with a, with a new habit. You don't have to worry about killing the old habit. Just replace it with a new one. Yeah. Start living life differently. Buy less stuff. Uh, use that money to live. Yeah. Use that money to, uh, you know, I read something recently, you know, we don't live to, uh, to eat and pay bills. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not what life is about. Yeah. It's so much more than that. You know, it should be reversed if anything. Yeah. Yeah. And for people like yourself who want to see and travel, then, you know, start making those moves. Like you said, to be able to do that. Right. And for me, yeah, make them right now. Yeah. Now's the time you yeah. can start, you can start stripping down right now while money is tight. If you don't have money coming in or if you're trying now to survive off unemployment, if you've been fortunate enough to start drawing that right, right now, yeah. it's not going to be your full income. Um, start getting rid of stuff now or start making plans on how, when you do start, when income does start coming back and it will, it will, it's going to take some time, but it will start coming back. Yeah. Start making plans now. So you'll know like, you know what, it's something like this ever happens again. I will definitely be in a much better position than I am right now. Right. Or if you're looking to start a business, it's the same thing. Like you said, it's yeah. easier to start a business when you don't have massive payments. So this could oh, be the time, time too that, you know, when you have extra time, it's when your brain starts thinking about things. So maybe you have this mm -hmm. cool business opportunity and you're like, you know what, maybe I, I need to start pursuing this. But if yeah. you can make those moves now already towards minimizing what you have, Get rid of a few payments, like you said. Pay off some credit card stuff. Or if it's possible because the income's not coming in, that's the plan at least, right? In six months, I'm going to take care of debt. And then in, in about a year, I'm going to start my business. 100%. I could not be doing what I'm doing right now had I not made that preparation. Now, uh, in 2018, I had no idea that I was preparing for this, than what we're experiencing right now. Right. But I was preparing to be able to live off of my writing, which uh, really is my business. Whether mm -hmm. I want to live off my own books and writing efforts or the writing I do for others, whatever the case may be, I was preparing myself to, for that to be my lifestyle, for that mm -hmm. to be my business. And I worked for an entire year. Like I said, I made sacrifices. I didn't spend any kind of extracurricular money. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it, and it wasn't a drudgery. I didn't live in misery for a year because I was a man on a mission, right? I had a purpose. I was super excited about it. I knew June 1st of 2019, I was hitting the road. I was going for it. And, uh, and I would not have been able to do that had I not made the moves, like you just said, made the moves to prepare myself. So I paid things down. The only thing I owed money on when I left was my car, and I only had six months left to pay on that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had saved enough money where I could pay it off. I didn't. I just kind of eked that money out over time and slowly paid it off as I was easing my way into a different lifestyle. But again, like you said, Candace, it's all about the preparation. So now you have all this time. You could be prepping, writing your book, building that platform for your business that you've already been dreaming about. What have you got to lose? It's not going to cost you any money to start typing away on your computer or writing out by longhand uh, your book, your plan, the things you want to do. Make those moves now. So six months, seven months, eight months from now, when things are back to normal, whatever that normal is, <laughs> um, and you're in a better position to make a move, you'll be ready. Because yeah. if you don't, you'll be starting then. And then maybe six months after that, we have another pandemic or something, then you weren't ready. So there's no time like the present to yeah. begin planning and making those moves. Yeah. And I think with things like content too, if you're looking to ramp up your business, you have to be doing that now and you have to be watching okay when's the time to start getting that stuff up yeah you can't, you can't be waiting okay i'm gonna wait until i hear the economy's back at it and then i'm gonna start prepping content it just doesn't work that way so i think it's just crucial. oh yeah right now go ahead yeah i apologize i didn't mean to interrupt okay. i was gonna say right now it's the perfect time because 
you have a much larger audience who's probably going to see your stuff right now than you will probably six months from now. Because right now, people are much more active on all the social media yeah. and the internet than they were just a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think that people don't recognize that the professionals have six months to a year's worth of content all laid out already. Now, obviously, you can shift yeah. that and, and keep it relevant. Sure, so sure. If somebody had prepared content for now, they're probably not using it and they're making very fresh content that's applicable to COVID and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, but this yes. is the time where somebody can you know, use your services to get all that content ready, be ready to go, and you can help them with you know, taking content and making little quotes for social media and, and repurposing it all and, and getting into the videos and stuff. But there's so much opportunity and um, now's the time, I think. So, 100%. You know, I, I can't emphasize enough everything you just said being spot on about once you create the content, um, unless it's of a time sensitive nature or directly related to an event in time that's going to come to pass. Yeah. Your content is going to be out there for a long time. I have a book. My second book was called Your Time Is Now, and it's basically a distillation of all the self-development principles that changed my life several years ago. Mm -hmm. I wrote that book in 2016, but it still is applicable to this day. And mm -hmm. in fact, I did that work a long time ago. I don't ever have to do that work again, but I'm getting ready to pull a talk out of this. I want to create my own signature talk, if you will, out of uh, chapter two on here. I probably could do one for every chapter. And because I did the work a long time ago mm -hmm. and I can do that now and start creating video because this is going to be like my guide for creating videos for online. So mm -hmm. everything you just said is uh, so applicable. If people would just do the work now, mm -hmm. then you're, you're ready to go. So you've talked a little bit about things that you have upcoming. Uh, tell us about in your business, what do you kind of see as the next year or two years in your business and how you're looking to grow? My thoughts, my plans of where I want to head, I do want to move more and more into my own material uh, for the last five years and even currently. I do a lot of writing for other people and I love doing that because I really love helping people get their message out. And uh, I'm not going to be stopping that anytime soon, but I'm also focusing more on creating my own content at the same time. Um, so really, I want to grow in both areas. Uh, and the more people who contact me, um, the more work I can do for them, especially now during this time, mm -hmm. help get their message out. But um, I want to, um, what am I trying to say here? I want to grow both areas, both creating content for others, but also increasing my own impact by writing more books and putting out more online content and creating more of a consistent message uh, of what I'm about because I'm moving into areas uh, that involve writing, but aren't necessarily writing oriented per se. Um, I'm gonna be doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching with people, mm -hmm. as well as I wanna create my own coaching programs. Uh, from a two-pronged approach, basically. One geared towards writers specifically, and it's more towards um, getting past your own self-limiting beliefs and getting into writing, as it is to technical. I'm not gonna be giving technical writing and construction, uh, instruction because I don't feel I'm qualified to do that. But, uh, and it's a gap. I don't think people are getting, I want to fill that gap. Yeah. So, uh, I hope it answered your question. I, I really want to grow into helping more people and expanding my impact, both by helping them get their message out through writing content for them, but also expanding my reach, uh, through more books and online video content based on my writing. Right. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much Keith, for all of your encouragement for everybody and sharing your story again you know this was more about book writing and PR and the power of of using your words within your business to grow but a uh, very yes. cool lifestyle share as well um, that people can think I, about. I appreciate it yeah yeah so thank you so much and well I appreciate I, I'm honored that you asked me to be on here and I appreciate the work that you're doing because uh, your work goes beyond financial I mean um, that's a key pain point for many people right now so I'm um, very happy to know that you are out there doing that work and helping people get through these times. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. So um, if people want to reach out to you, the best way to find you. Okay. You can email me at Keith Smith at straight up living.com. 
you can find my website straightupliving.com or I am on social media as Keith Smith writer. So uh, reach out to me in any or all of those ways. I'm awesome. totally cool with that. Awesome. And we'll have some links as well. Thank you so much, Keith. Keep in touch. Thank you, Candace. I appreciate it. Take care. Mm -hmm.